All right, hello everyone. So I have Stephanie here today and I wanted her to explain about human anatomy and how we are actually able to stay in the saddle and absorb our horse's motion. It's really amazing like the way we're designed. It's like we're designed to ride. So Stephanie's gonna explain about the pelvis and the muscles around our pelvis and our seat that actually allow us to stay in the saddle. Okay, so here's a pelvis. And um, if you can see here, this is the top part of your thigh bone here. So it doesn't show the whole thigh bone. Um, I'm gonna show you guys a couple things that are extremely important for riders um, and something that we focus on a lot. So here's your seat bones. So, so your seat bones are actually in the front side of your pelvis and those attach to your hamstring muscles here um, and then other hip muscles and then your your hip flexors actually come from up here like this and then come from here and then go down but what i really want to talk to you guys about is um, some of the main hip muscles that we use to get our leg on the horse what really pulls those seat bones down into the saddle so the main one that you hear amelia and i talking about all the time is your glute med muscle so that muscle lies on the side of the pelvis i'm going to try and show you this way so it kind of attaches here and then it comes up and around and attaches to your iliac crest here when this muscle contracts it's what helps pull you upright in the saddle so if you're collapsing to the right in the saddle like this what happens then is it doesn't allow that glute med muscle or that glute med muscle might not be working like it needs to when it contracts it kind of pushes you up and puts you straighter in the saddle what's cool about this glute med muscle is that when that's working properly it allows you to use your abdominal muscles a little bit better so your transverse abdominal muscles here not your six pack, six pack ones, but your transverse abdominal muscles wrap like this. And they attach to the, your iliac crest here with fascia. The cool thing about this is that when this muscle's working, it attaches with fascia right to where the transverse abdominal muscles attach to with fascia. So when this is working correctly, it actually helps you be more accessible, have more access to these transverse abdominal muscles. What that does then is it plugs you into the saddle more and it allows you to follow your horse better because this is active and this is active. Something cool that they've found in a lot of research that people have been doing with riders is that when you put your heel down, it allows you to use your glute med muscle more which then allows you to use your abdominal muscles more so that's really cool i think um, i want to talk about one more muscle and it kind of gets a bad rap in the fitness community because it does get tight on people but it also does have a really important function for riders and that's your piriformis muscle so people are always trying to stretch their piriformis muscle out which is great but it also needs to be worked so that attaches from here and then it comes across here and goes underneath the tailbone or the sacrum right here. So when that works, it pulls the leg muscle, the leg bone out like this, which is this motion. So when you're riding and you need to get that leg aid on, it's working a little bit of that piriformis muscle right here. The cool thing about that is, is when that's working, it also stabilizes your pelvis. So that way your pelvis can't move around. So another way that it's gonna help you be stable in the saddle and plug your seat into the saddle more. Awesome, that's so cool. <laughs> I think that it's like really interesting how our, if we use the correct muscles, you're able to stay stable in the saddle. And I know a lot of times people like tighten their glute max or use too much their six packs abs and that makes it not good. So yep. those are the muscles you should be using when you're riding. Yep. Cool. All right, the end. Okay.